Hello, welcome everyone to the eighth episode of Soul Talk with the Heart. Today, I'm very glad to be able to talk to Dr. Rashida from Canada. I'm actually away on holiday and it's a great thing that we're in the same country. I'm very pleased to have Dr. Rashida, particularly that she's very, very busy touring, um, doing workshops, holding workshops and teaching her students the new cutting edge of healing, which is what we're going to talk about today, epigenetic healing cycles. Before we begin, um, if you're enjoying Soul Talk with Sahar, if you're enjoying watching these videos, please let us know where you're watching from. We're recording this because of the time difference between us, but I will be there online and we can answer any questions you have. So let us know where you're watching from, leave your comments. And of course, if you're watching this on the uh, rebroadcast, we will also answer your questions. When I asked Dr. Rashida that I want to have her as a guest on, on the show on Bridges of Light, she said, to what purpose? And I, she has a good point. And we're doing this um, with Gitano to connect so that all the light workers, healers, people of like minds can share and connect. But more importantly for me is to be able to help you raise the level of your awareness, um, the level of your consciousness to know what options you have. Today's talk is emphasizing health and what you can do to look after your body um, in order to fulfill your life's purpose. So please join me in welcoming Dr. Rashida. Hello, Rashida. Hi, Sahar, and thank you. thank you. Thank you for taking out to talk time for, to talk to us today. <laughs> I know you've been very busy and it took a while to schedule this. Um, before we begin, you were a medical um, doctor, you worked as a doctor, you worked in hospitals both in India and in the UAE, and somehow your interest in the metaphysics and into alternative therapies grew over time. May I ask you to give us an idea or, or a background briefly as to how you got into healing, because it is my observation that Sometimes when we have a calling, things happen and we find ourselves on the path and we have to answer that calling. So it's interesting for me to see that you went through something similar where you left what you were doing um, in an orthodox way to do it in an alternative way. Um, my father, uh, when I just joined medical school, he was found to have uh, kidney cancer. Mm -hmm. And um, I was uh, quite uh, happy that I was becoming a doctor so that, you know, I could help my father. That was my uh, uh, thought at that time. And uh, my father, you know, he had, uh, uh, he, they removed his kidney and part of his intestines. And uh, he um, survived for four years with uh, multiple uh, metastasis in bones. And uh, as he was getting more and more deteriorated, um, he wanted to visit uh, one of his gurus um, who lived about 18 hours travel time from where we were at that time. So we took him there and um, this religious guru was, you know, a, a, a Hindu religious man who didn't have any English uh, knowledge or knowledge about medicine or knowledge about health and all. That's what yes. I thought. Yes. And uh, when he asked me, uh, being a medical student, I proudly actually explained, I could explain, that's what I thought of my father's uh, condition. And then he just closed his eyes for half a minute to maximum one minute. He just made some kind of, you know, like this, you know, calculations in his own head. And he said, oh, your father has poison in his body. So I suggest a poisonous fruit, you boil it, and filter the boiled water and um, give him the four drops every two weeks. And that really blew my mind. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Because cancer is poisonous and the chemotherapeutic drugs that we give are, are called cytotoxic drugs. Yes. So that means poisonous to cells. And that correlated and what was mind blowing was the fruit he suggested is the same plant from the flower of the same plant we extract a particular chemotherapeutic drug which was given to my father wow amazing it's called vincristine right the chemotherapeutic drug is called vincristine and they were giving vincristine to my father and this guy sitting in a remote village 
without any medical knowledge, without any you know science, science scientific knowledge and all, yes. Yes. you could diagnose and prescribe within one minute. Amazing. So that said, oh, there's much more than what I'm learning that I need to explore. Yeah. This came to my mind. And that was way back in 1980. And um, I continued to study medicine, but still I was, I kept my eyes open and anything weird would attract my eye. Fantastic. Anything weird. And, you know, like, so I went and did so many, you know, like different kinds of alternative, you know, therapies, studied this, bought these books, bought those books and all that. And um, um, uh, in the process, I was still practicing and all that, that I was continuing. And I came across with a book, a massage therapy book. And in that, they talked about applied kinesiology. Mm -hmm. There were a few tips in that. And when, when, I, when I saw these tips, I applied some of those tips to people who came to me for yeah. different uh, pains and issues and all. And they were getting better within a minute. A minute. So I said, wow, this, there's something to it. So I wanted to study that. But because I was in Dubai at that time, financially, I was not in a position to go to US to do eight weekends. You know, like I had to travel eight yes. times every yes. weekend yes. to finish the course. So I couldn't do it. So anyway, uh, the universe actually answered my call. And actually, uh, a guy came from Australia to teach uh, Touch for Health in Dubai, which is an offshoot of applied kinesiology. Oh, I see. Okay. And that's where I met uh, Katrina. Yes, because we met through Katrina. And yeah. you and I worked on, on healing remotely on, on my late husband, bless his soul. And where you were of immense support, really, for both of us which is why I got intrigued about what you do. But today we're going to talk about something different that I haven't really um, uh, known so much about, which is epigenetic healing. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. this is actually, um, see, um, epigenetics are um, about gen genes. Mm -hmm. Epi about, genetic is gene. So we all know in 1950s, um, they found that there is a DNA and then, you know, the sequence is one way and yeah. information goes only from one to another, but not the reverse way and all those things. And people started believing, of course, it is uh, true, the genes and all. And then what we believed was there was no escape from this. Yes. So if there is a disease that is in my genes from my uh, forefathers, I will definitely get that. Right. Or I may get according to the statistics of it. Yes. So sometimes 50% of the children get it. If it came from both the parents, there is a 100% chance of all the children to get it. So depending on, you know, like the, 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 the genetic information and all those things. So if, if my father, my mother was a diabetic uh, and my, all my aunts uh, and my father didn't, so I have a 50-50 chance of getting diabetes. Right. But I expect it to come at any time in my life. And you all know that our thoughts actually lead us to get to disease. Yes. So, um, so, I, um, uh, so what happens in the, in the epigenetics, the gene code will be the same, the genetic code. But the epigenome is the one which controls the gene's expression. So the right. gene code does not get changed, but the right. expression can be changed. Right. It is like um, having um, um, what uh, the playlist. Yes. You may have a playlist of about 10,000 songs. Yes. Okay, you may keep the playlist, but you may not play all of them. Yes, I understand. Yes. You may choose only a few of them, 100 of them every now and then, and 100 of them maybe once in a while, and 100 of them maybe one time in your lifetime. Right. And the rest of them, you may never play, but you may keep them. Right. Oh, you know, I like this, I like this. So the epigenetics is, epigenome is the one which controls the expression of the genes. Of the genes, yes. Um, anything? Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is just the beginning. So, yeah. so we spoke about, when we spoke on the telephone, we spoke about the healing cycles of epigenetics. So what do you do? What do you teach? Can you give us a, a background on what epigenetic healing is? 
So you're, you're controlling or are you conditioning the expression of the genes? In other words, we don't have to have, we don't have to develop that disease. Is that right? Yeah. See, the epig epigenome can actually result in a disease or result in the reversal of the disease or not having the disease. Oh, wow. Okay. So it is up to, up to the epigenome. Okay. So supposing uh, the, the, this particular one is actually about how we think, how we, um, our environment, how we eat, what we are you know, associated with, including friends and our associations. So what we drink, what we breathe, everything influences the epigenome. Okay. So when uh, in epigenetic healing cycles, this whole program is a one day workshop. Right. Yeah. Where there are a lot, what we uh, address is the fears that a person has. Okay. So there are about uh, 12 universal fears and uh, the fears about um, how we have, uh, you know, the work related issues, relationships, and the fears of men in general, fears of women in general. So it could be anything that can give rise to this kind of, um, you know, um, uh, result in which epigenome we are going to use. Mm, so what happens is the DNA is actually tied up in the, um, um, in, in the protein structures and all. Right. So it can be hidden. If it is a disease gene, you can hide it with the epigenome. It's like a um, um, post-it note. Okay. It's a post-it note. Do not use it. Okay. <laughs> so it closes. I'm just giving just a yeah, simple. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. So the, the tabs will actually tell the gene whether to be expressed or not expressed. And go ahead. You have so, a question? Yeah. When you say tabs, do you mean what you do is that the healing that you put these tabs in so that the epigene is either activated or, or recessed. Exactly. It, it can be influenced. The epigenome can be influenced with the medication we take. Sometimes the medication, Western medicine is, you know, there is a, there is a lot of value to it because as a medical doctor, I know the value of Western medicine. Right. Right. So the epigenome is, you know, comes through the medication, alternative therapies, healing, and self uh, affirmations these are all you know like they all influence the epigenomes so are you saying and, we can use uh, sorry are you saying we can use this method in conjunction with the medication yes it, okay. it, everything is belief okay everything comes from belief if someone believes that i need to take medication only then they heal with the medication only okay. if someone believes I will take the medication at the same time. I want to help myself with the alternative therapies and healing because medication is only biochemical. Yes. But healing happens at a subconscious level, at an energetic level. Yes. So energies are energy flows are very, very crucial in anybody's health Yes. or ill health. So I personally, my choice is, um, because I know the Western medicine, I know the healing, alternative therapies and all these things. Um, the, the alternative therapies and healing is about taking responsibility for your own health. Absolutely. Absolutely. So when you take responsibility for your own health and use these alternative therapies to maintain your health and as much as possible, you know, then if there is anything required, of course, there is Western medicine to fall back on. This is my take. Okay, so so really, what you're saying also, don't wait until you're ill. You can start this healing before you yeah. have, you know, God forbid, uh, you know, a horrible disease. Uh, exactly. Yeah. Because I think sometimes, you know, as much as we try and help people with healing, sometimes it might be a bit too late because the disease has already set in. And what I've observed in the last twenty five years is that the more the disease has set in, the more difficult it is to kind of switch the clock back. Whereas if you address things as they happen, you have a better chance of reversing that disease process. True. Um, usually when I'm teaching, I talk about uh, thoughts. Thoughts are very necessary 
yes. in moments, we tend to think. And we think more than 5,000 5, thoughts a day or maybe more. I have no clue exact number. Yeah. Uh, so what happens, these thoughts can actually trigger some emotions. They can be happy emotions. They can be sad emotions. They can be emotions that may disturb us. Um, but the body is so beautifully made that it knows how to bounce back. Yes. But that means, you know, like you're so upset the previous night, you sleep over it. And the next morning you wake up and say, you know what? I don't care. That happens. But sometimes you care a lot the next morning. Yes. Yes. And that's true. the next day much more. So it becomes more solid. The issue becomes more solid in your mind. So what happens whenever these are um, uh, these disturbing emotions are there in your system more than the system can handle, it disturbs the energy flows of the body. And these energy flows can bounce back into normal flow. Because there are patterns, there yeah. are patterns of the energy flows. Whether you take a Chinese uh, acupuncture meridian system or Indian chakra system, yeah. or in ancient you know systems in the world, there are more than eight to ten systems that I know of. Maybe there are hundred. I have no clue of. But you know, so what happens when these energies are disturbed for longer than the body can handle? That's when the symptoms come up. Right. So when you get a symptom, I don't feel good. There's something I, I can't pinpoint what it is. So I go to a doctor. I go to somebody, whatever it is, you know, whoever it is, I believe in. So I go and they say, because of the test and all, they don't show anything. Oh, there is nothing, you know. And uh, yeah, the, most of the times we call them psychosomatic yeah. conditions. And um, because we can't really find a, a change, a testable change. So when you can find a testable change, that's when we, we don't know what to do. Maybe we give some symptomatic relief or you know, with some kind of treatment and all. But then they become signs eventually. So when they turn into signs, that's when you, you can find them in the tests. And then we can diagnose it as a particular disease. Exactly, but probably by then it's too late already. <laughs> exactly, that, that's what you are saying. You see, sometimes it may be too late. So what happens here, is any in any healing modality not just epigenetics yes you know, I, I did touch for health i did applied kinesiology professional kinesiology practice and you know um, energy psychology all these things these are all everything you know whether you call reiki pranic healing you know any kind of reflexology everything works on the same lines yeah. they're different modalities but they they work on the same lines so um so epigenetics is one of my the latest feathers in my cap. Lovely. Yeah. Lovely. Sounds very interesting. So do you treat clients with it? Like, if I may ask, how do you diagnose? Like, if I came to you, how would you diagnose what I need to do? Okay. Genetic healing. That's a very good word that you use. Diagnosis. We don't diagnose. Okay. There is no diagnosis. There is no treatment. Okay. So what happens is in... Let us take only epigenetic healing cycles right now. Let me just explain a little more about epigenetic healing cycles. Then I'll tell you how we work on them. Thank you. Yeah. We can use it for self-help and we can use it for others, family, friends, clients, everybody. So here, when, when, a, when a client comes to you, obviously there is a problem or there is an issue that the, the client wants to address. So that is the diagnosis. <laughs> okay. So you begin with the issue that one is complaining about at this moment in time. Exactly. And we set a goal according to that. Just give me an example of any issue. Then I'll explain to you. My joints, my finger joints. Okay. So if you have finger joint problems, that means your grip is not so good or you can't hold something for a long time or you cannot turn the door knob, or you cannot have carry something very heavy. Not that bad but it started with the middle fingers and sometimes they get stuck, they just bent and then I have to crack them open. Oh, trigger finger. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, we don't diagnose in this. In, in this okay. no, no, I'm not saying what the symptom is. Yeah. I, I, I use the Western medical uh, diagnostic uh, tool for saying, you know, what it is, trigger yes, fingers. Yes. But oh, that means um, what you cannot do would be the goal statement. Yes, I understand. So what do you want to do is you want to use your fingers all yeah. the time comfortably. Yeah. 
close and open easily. Yeah. Easily and comfortably with a smooth flow. Okay. The joint movement will be, you know, smooth flow. So we set it up as the goal statement. And then once that goal statement is made, you actually find out which fear, universal fear or specific fears of men or women or work related or relationships related, whatever it is, we identify. There's a specific way of identifying that. So then once we identify that, we discuss with the client if that makes any sense to the person. Most of the times they actually make sense to them. But sometimes it may not because the issue has not come to the conscious knowledge of the person. And it's not apparent, yeah. Apparent to the person. Can I, can I volunteer to use myself and my trigger fingers as a case? So of the first, first step is what the symptom is. Yeah. Second step is find the goal statement. Yeah. And then the third step is identify which universal fear I'm resonating with consciously or unconsciously. Exactly. Yeah. And then when once we find that there are five basic cycles that we use, not just one, there are five different cycles that we use in this. And these cycles are um, uh, resilient cycle. So the resilient cycle depends on the uh, energy channels. Here, all the channels that we use are uh, Chinese meridian cycles. Mm -hmm. meridian channels. Yeah. So the, every channel has got an emotional component. Yes. And there's a specific point on the body, on the channel, on the meridian, that actually is very sensitive to that particular emotional thing. So while we are working on each, each point on the body, we uh, keep the person, you know, uh, in tune with the thought or the emotion that is disturbing, whether it makes sense or doesn't make sense. Yeah, I understand. So now we have, that is the... Um, resilient cycle. Right. There's something called Vesuvius cycle. Vesuvius cycle is about how upsetting or anger, yeah, anger and that kind of thing. Yeah. So there are points on the body again that correlate with each meridian and yeah. we work with them. Okay. And then the next cycle. So, so let me just repeat that. So the first cycle is resilience. Resilience. And you find the emotion uh, I'll come back to that. Uh, oh, yeah, emotion of that. But there are in each cycle, there are four methods. Okay. So I will come to the methods when we, we talk about that. So four cycles, four methods. Five cycles, five cycles. Five each, cycles each has four methods. Yeah. Okay. So resilience, Vesuvius, and self soothing cycle. Self soothing cycle is about the blood circulation. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then the next one is um, neurolymphatic cycle. It's called a lymphatic cycle. Okay. So the lymphatic cycle is about the neurolymphatic connection to each meridian. Okay. So when we say meridian, it's not only the meridian, the, the associated organ, the associated cells, muscles, all of them will be, you know, influenced by what we are doing on these points. So if, if I may point out to the viewers, um, the meridian, and correct me, Dr. Rashida, if I'm wrong, the meridian is the point that actually connects viscerally the physical body with the energetic body, because the meridian is an energy line, but it also runs within the body. So it's quite yeah. important working with, um, with meridians. You know, whether yeah. with finger touch or or yeah whatever it is so when you work with the meridian what you're saying is you're processing the emotion or the fear you're also accessing the organ itself that relates to, to that fear or to that uh, yeah to that memory or that fear I'm, i nearly exactly. said memory i don't know whether memory comes into it but yeah yeah memory you know like universal fears are all memory fear memory of the fear yeah okay yeah. So, for example, if I have a fear um, of spiders, it doesn't mean necessarily mean that I have an issue with spiders in this lifetime. It's a universal fear. So it could be something that, you know, whatever, genetically inherited from time immemorial. That's, right, that's perfect. Because each condition, like supposing you have the finger issues right now, that may not be connected to your fear of spiders. Okay. It may be a different fear. 
Okay. So, yeah. so th these are, this is what you mean by universal fear, fear that almost everybody experiences yeah. one way or another. Yeah. You could have gender fears, you know, like that's why uh, yeah. it's specific to men and specific to women. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. And uh, then the, the, the lymphatic cycle and then the chi cycle. Chi cycle is the meridian flow cycle. Okay. So these are the five cycles we actually work on. And each one has got four different methods of application. So I missed one. So resilience, Vesuvius, lymphatic, and chi. Which one did I miss? Self-soothing. Self-soothing. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so, so what you mean by the four methods, that each cycle has four methods? Four methods of treatment, you mean? Four methods of applying that particular cycle. Ah, okay. Such as? Um, one is like uh, the first aid. Okay. The first aid is always about the time. Where you, when, wherever in the world you are, the time you are in at that time. Oh, I see. Okay. Depending on that, we do a, a first aid technique. So is that like the time of the session or the time of the pain or? Time of the session. The session, okay. So that That's also- a very good question, yeah. It's, uh, in other modalities, we go to the time of the pain as well, sometimes to find out. But actually when we are working on it, we work on the time of the particular session time. Okay. So I, I suppose you don't wanna go into details because you teach that, but I wanna, what I want to tell the viewers can they learn this online or they can learn it, you said, in one day? If they come to Canada, then they will be able to do their course in one day. Is that right? They can do that. I'm teaching in India in October okay. in three different cities. Okay, please tell us because a lot of our viewers in Dubai are also connected to India. So maybe they can access you there, have access mm -hmm. to you over there. That's right. I'm teaching in Mumbai, Hyderabad and Chennai. Fantastic. Three, okay, three and this is in September, October? It's actually, yeah, end of 30th September, 2nd October, and 13th October. Okay, if you give me the dates, I'll, I'll post them, um, you know, with the video so they can um, have that as well. Sure. Do you teach it online? Can I learn it online? Um, online is a bit tricky. Um, and uh, um, instead of people coming to a particular country, if supposing, if you have a lot of viewers in, in Dubai, I can come and teach in Dubai. Fantastic. If you have a lot of viewers in, in, in European countries and if, and if there are about, you know, like feasible number of students, uh, if someone wants to organize, I can, I can go and do that. I think that's a very good idea because, you know, we often talk about what's the purpose of doing this. Of course, the purpose of doing the talks and, and the Bridge of Light is to connect people. But it might be worthwhile for our viewers if you want to actually learn or connect with our guests. The websites are always there, but I will list them below. I will also list them on the YouTube channel. And uh, Dr. Rashida, they can connect with you directly if they want to attend the course or Maybe. ask a question or if they want to organize it in a country. I know we have a lot of viewers from Italy. We have a lot of viewers from England. Um, we're expanding this. We're hoping to get a lot of viewers from the Middle East as well. Okay. Um, but, you know, this has just started like, you know, two months ago and already we have thousands of, of um of members but you know equally you're quite welcome to connect with dr rashida and do this um because it's it's very interesting and i've is that what we did when we spoke when i was in dubai we used the epigenetic healing is that right because yes, we found we a new statement and okay so that makes sense to me and i can tell you that it really you know worked it really helped and um, I'm always excited about learning something new because I think once you put the knowledge here, then it seems possible to have a different future from the one that you might think, well, I'm definitely going that way. And I think this is what knowledge is about. You know, it opens up an opportunity or a possible future that otherwise you would not have thought of. You know, it takes you off in a different direction, which is what healing is about. I think it's about leaving the past and carving a new future or a new timeline or a new outcome um, for yourself. Would you, would you agree? Because I'm often, you know, my clients often ask me, you know, how come some people heal and some don't? And I think very often we carry our emotional baggage with us. And I think if you do that, 
you live in the past and if you live in the past we download the energies of healing right now so if you live in the past you're not really in tune with the healing right now um and very often people will say i had a relative who had leukemia and he told me he recovered but he told me you know he was always afraid that he will get cancer and specifically he was always afraid that he will get leukemia you know to the point that he manifested it you know but but there's so much more because we hear about cancer so much um you know nearly everyone you know it's either someone you know or someone you know who knows someone who does and i think it's it is becoming a universal fear that's true actually uh, we attract our issues uh, uh, what we fear comes to us say that again what do you mean whatever we fear we attract, we attract. yes absolutely yeah yeah um, and actually, there is um, uh, something more that I would like to share. Um, do we have time? Yes, yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. I just want to talk a little bit about uh, uh, Dr. Du. Okay. Dr. Bruce Du, who actually developed this program. Okay. And he, um, uh, he's a medical doctor. How do you spell Du? D U D. D E W E. D E W E. Okay. Yeah. And he, when he was um, 21, he was actually, uh, you know, like um, was influenced a little bit from, when, from his age 15 or so to all these affirmations and about thoughts, you know, how thoughts influence our body and all those things. When he was 21, he actually developed a heritable, uh, inherited allergic condition. Okay. And eventually they actually found that he inherited from both the families like mother and father side and then they when they diagnosed it eventually it was called polyarthritis nodosa mm -hmm. it was an autoimmune disease Gosh. and it's that means you cannot survive for more than six months something like that it was okay. Totally okay so there's no going back on it. That's what it means. So he um, he actually um, got panicky. He did all kinds of treatments, alternative therapies, because he was open to that. He did everything, Western, alternative, alternative medicine, everything. And nothing was working on him. And his, she became, Joan became his wife later. But at that time, she told him, you survive for seven months, I'll marry you. <laughs> Brilliant. She gave him an incentive. So that was his goal. So he set that goal and he worked through it. And he survived. And, you know, this was 50 years ago. Yes. So obviously he survived. Okay. Lovely story, yes. Yeah. And then, but he was still survived, but still having the issue. His lungs were working only functioning 10%. Oh gosh. Mm -hmm. He went to Fiji on a holiday and he felt better. Mm -hmm. He thought it was the holiday that made him all right. But it is vitamin D, which is very vital in um, inflammatory conditions and autoimmune conditions. So sitting in the sun, basically. Yeah. So he didn't realize at that time. Now he looks back and thinks, you know, oh, these, these are the things I did and they work like this. And then there was a big um, uh, downfall in his health after some time. And then he really had to drastically change his diet. And that improved him again. And then there was another episode where he, uh, he was introduced to applied kinesiology and touch for health kinesiology. And then he studied and he started teaching touch, you know, kines kinesiology studies. So he developed a lot of programs. And then this is his recent uh, baby the baby genetic healing cycles yeah. and you know like it is such a beautiful thing but when you look at what he has done he first goal that means mind thought emotions mm. then diet mm. so these are all epigenomes the thoughts are epigenomes the diet is epigenome the vitamin d is epigenome nature is epigenome uh, um, energies, applied kinesiology, kinesiology, energy sciences, these are all, they all work on your epigenome.
Okay, can you hear me? You're kind of which help the genes to express the you. Can you can you hear me? Yeah, it froze for a little, but now you're okay. Yeah. yeah. So and you're saying um, these five or six elements are are the epigenome, which is mind, diet, vitamin D, nature, and uh, and energies, energy work, alternative medicine. Right. And Dr. Dawson Church, he actually in his uh, uh, research, there is a um, we should always maintain the ratio between cortisol and DHEA. Mm, yes. And cortisol is the um, adrenal stress hormone. DHEA is the adrenal healing hormone. So when you are happy, when you are joyful, you release a lot of DHEA. So and if you stress. have, yeah, yeah when, you, when, when you reduce your stress and increase your um, um, you know, joy and all, so the DHEA improves. So your healing uh, mechanisms because we all have natural healing mechanisms so they all improve so what we are doing here is um, we are actually helping the body to heal by itself even though we call them healing cycles I'm not going to heal anybody who am I to heal anybody yeah I agree you can yeah. facilitate or or balance or fine-tune the body you know as you would a piano perhaps so that it really plays to its true note because I think um, you're absolutely right, and this is scientifically proven that stress really kills and the imbalance of the cortisol and the lack of vitamin D, because most of us work indoors now, whether you live in very hot or very cold weather. And I've noticed a lot of people are taking vitamin D tablets instead of just spending half an hour in, in nature. And as you know, I, I went through, um, well, I still am grieving at the moment, but what I found really, really helped, you know, after the passing away of, of my mother and, and my husband last year, being in nature and um, here, of course, in Canada, it's a big contrast coming from Dubai with all the trees and the green. I just find myself crying all the time, but, but it's great because I want to let it out. But sometimes that's all you need to do rather than psychotherapy is just be with, with nature. Um, trees you know i'm attracted to trees here and it's just when you approach a tree you really feel that energy and you feel the kind of the revival um i want to go back if i can dr ishida to the cycles so we spoke about the resilience which deals with fear vesuvius is about emotion all of them, all you know? of them work with fear uh, yeah all of them. Uh, resilience cycle is about the emotions of specific meridians oh i see specific meridians okay and Vesuvius sounds fantastic. Is that to do with emotional eruptions? Exactly. So when you do the Vesuvius cycle healing, what it does is it helps you to have control over yourself. You'll be well grounded and centered in situations and then you will not erupt so much. So do we all go through these cycles? Uh, we need whenever it is needed we, in in the in the in the workshop. You will learn when to use and how to use. Okay, so the self soothing is is presumably what it says. It's about learning to self soothe. It, it's uh, nurturing blood circulation. Oh, you said, you said. Blood circulation takes the oxygen and nurturing the nutrients to each cell of the body. So that includes also being fit and walking or. Yeah. Uh, actually, being fit is even um, lymphatic cycle. Oh, really? Uh, lymphatics are, I know, they don't have any, uh, what do you call, valves. So there is no nothing to pump or something. So it is like, you know, when you're jumping, the trampoline and all those things, they actually help us to mobilize the lymphatic flow because it has to be uh, mobilized into the, into the, into the right uh, heart. Oh, into the right heart. Yeah. Then, and then um, do toxins, whatever pass through the kidneys. They carry everything, every toxin that is from every cell of the body. Wow, so that, that goes to the heart and then? Yeah, like how the, the blood, you know, we call yeah, it, you know, the, the blood. blood. Yeah, obviously so because, the same. Uh, yeah, yeah, because it drains into the blood vessels and the blood vessels end up into the heart. Okay, I understand. Um, yeah. And then the chi cycle, is that about overall wellness 
the flow of the meridians the flow again of the meridians so one is to do with the flow of blood and this is to do with the flow of the meridians exactly and you said that the cycle depends on the time that you have your session one of the one of the corrections one of the corrections so I have a feeling this is not as complicated as it sounds, but it can be learned in a day. Yeah, definitely. Very, very simple. I love the way he, you know, uh, put all this together. And it's, it's so beautiful, you know, like so easy. Um, and we really don't need to um, know the science behind it. I understand. I understand because it works because like, Sometimes, you know, people ask me like, well, how do I know this is works? And, you know, sometimes it can be as simple as the proof is in the pudding and the pudding. Well, if it helps you, <laughs> never mind how it works, because your goal is to go back to normal um, exactly. rather than to go into the specific of it. But of course, some people are logical, rational, and the way to speak to them is by giving them the knowledge and the facts. And then, you know, they find it more acceptable. Um, there was something else that I was going to ask you. Do some methods not work for people and other methods are appropriate or, or it is not the method, but rather the person and how old or far away from their um, equilibrium or their center they are. So I think what I'm trying to ask you is, does healing always work or does it work for most or some? Or like, what if I have five sessions and I don't see a difference? What do I do then? Okay. Supposing, what is your favorite uh, uh, dessert? Um, that would be like a creme brulee. Well, oh, I, I don't even know what it is, but that's, that's okay. okay. I can, my second favorite is um, carrot cake or cheesecake. I'm lying. Cheesecake is my favorite. Okay. So supposing your neighbor makes a cheesecake or a carrot cake and brings it to your apartment or your house and rings the bell and you're not home, you don't open, so you can't have it. Okay, good. So when someone does a healing, healing uh, session on someone, the other person, if he's not open to receiving it, it will not work. That is number one. Is that consciously or unconsciously? Because like maybe consciously I want to heal, but unconsciously I don't. Okay, so when you have uh, unconscious or subconscious blockages, um, the modalities that I use have got actually know how to remove the blockage. Fantastic. So when I, even not for epigenetic healing cycles, but when I'm doing the other ones, I check if the person is 100% willing to release need for the problem because they want to keep the problem for some reason they don't know. Okay, and if the person is 100% willing to implement the goal, release the need to be here, and willingness to reach the goal. So both should be 100%. So in other words, you combine all your tools according yes. to what the client needs when you're working. Exactly, yeah. And there may be a lot of, lot of components that, uh, that, uh, that are involved in anybody's healing. So um, confidence in self, because this is, I'm not healing. You are the one who is healing yourself. Yeah. So they say, oh, if I'm the one, why didn't I heal all this time? So yeah. no, I won't. So that, that kind of, you know, block. Right. Yeah, it's a negative mindset. These are the things we work on them. Even if they have a block, then they feel, if, if someone says, you know, milk, uh, I don't know what, what milk does, so uh, I don't want to drink. You say, okay, drink, drink, whatever it is, whether it is milk or some energy drink. When you give it, the person says, huh, I feel energized. So even if he does not know how that works, what it does, it makes him energized. So then he says, oh, you know what? Next time when I'm low, let me drink that, that uh, drink. The same thing with energy sessions. When you're doing, as you said, you know, like you need to see the result. When once you experience the result, they start opening up more and more, even if they're closed before. So, so actually experiencing something can help you reprogram. I'm not sure that's the word, but helps you change maybe a belief system because you've had that experience firsthand. Exactly. And from your experience, was there like a particularly difficult case that you worked on where epigenetic healing really helped someone? Is there like something interesting that you'd like to mention or share with our audience? Yeah, this was uh, almost a couple of months ago. Um, uh, this guy actually, uh, he made an accident 
um, an animal, you know, they, he did not expect, you know, you know, like animals just jump. In front of the you car, know. okay. Yeah, this was a deer and then it just jumped and they jumped really fast. So he could not escape that. And ever since he um, hit that, he started getting different kinds of diseases, infections, you know, and he started becoming you know, more and more. He went into the... Sorry, because he was traumatized? Yeah. Oh, wow. Just from that incident, he started having a lot of incidents. Wow. Okay. Yeah, but he didn't know that that was the one which caused. That's what you're saying. Okay. So he was having this, you know, like any kind of treatment was not working. And um, he does not believe much in it, but he was open to it. Okay. Okay. So his wife is a very strong believer in all this. So she actually more or less pushed him to come to me for a session. So he comes and he actually, for some reason, felt very good after first session. And he said, I don't know what it is, but I felt good. Okay. Second session, we needed to do the epigenetic healing cycles. And it was unbelievable how he recovered. Fantastic. And in that session, this came up. Wow. The fears, one of the fears was, you know, like you, what goes around comes around. I killed it and I'll be killed. Oh, I see. Oh my God. Poor man. So this was kind of like haunting him. Yeah. So it is the belief, you know, what goes around comes around. So we all believe that. Yeah. So it will be there in, behind your mind. So, you know, worked on it and is absolutely, absolutely all right ever since that time. Fantastic. What about so, allergies and migraines? Is there a psychological or a, or a false belief system that is triggering them? There's a combination of belief system, your psychology, your genetic codes, your um, food, your atmosphere, environment, everything. There is everything that goes with that. For example, when my son was um, eight months old, he okay. developed asthma. Mm -hmm. And then he would get, you know, allergy to everything, you know, like every time he would wheeze. Um, so um, we did, you know, a lot of treatments. I was a medical doctor by then, you know, I was giving him treatment and all that. And I was still in the medical field at that time. Uh, but there is something, you know, like I always believed that if his lungs are not able to breathe well, we need to train them to be strong. Yes. How do you train anything to be strong? Is by exercise. Yeah. Yeah. So, when will his lungs be exercised is when he runs, when he plays. Yeah. I would send him out to play in the dust. In India, you know, like there is no, no paved and it's, it's like, you know, not very... Um, it's the uh, very thing that people would, would um, think you should not do. <laughs> yeah, it's not a very clean um, atmosphere, dusty and all. So he went and played and, you know, my neighbors would say, why do you send him? He's not well, you know, he's having asthma. I said, I don't care. He has to build it. And he got over his asthma. Wow. Well done. Yeah. I mean, it's just my belief. Yeah. And my belief, my son actually believes my belief because I am uh, the well-wisher of him. And he thinks I'm the most, uh, you know, sincerely uh, wishing for his best. Oh, bless him. Yeah. Any child, any yeah. child will believe his mother to begin with and father. So th that's how it worked on him because he trusted in me. Yes, yes, I understand. But also I think what you're saying on another level is I, I believe that if we have a vulnerability or a weakness, it's really a blessing in disguise because you're meant to overcome it uh, in order to build up your resilience, not kind of hide away because of it. That's right. You know, which is why, like, I, I feel now it's very common. Asthma is very common. Migraines are very common. Um, allergies are very common, particularly with children. And, you know, mothers would probably hide them away instead of letting them go out and play. I know also migraine sufferers. I mean, they would avoid the triggers. But then that reduces the quality of their life, you know, and then they get stuck where they are rather than teaching themselves and teaching their bodies to overcome it. Um, the the uh, reticular activating system that is in our um, brain stem, that is the one which filters the triggers that come to us, like the sounds, 
fights any for, from, from our five senses the information goes through that and it is actually like a filter and people get migraine headaches because of the triggers because it is overwhelming to them because there is the filter is not working very well interesting and and so, why would the filter not work so well again there are so many reasons it could be chemical it could be psychological it could be fear it could be you know physical it could be anything you know maybe the wrong posture you know like this you know maybe it could be anything i'm just giving you know just anything that comes know, to my mind. what you're saying but you know my brain is already thinking yeah wow. so it could be anything and i had uh, clients with uh, migraine who got I mean, completely relieved of the migraine headaches really yeah I'm going to send you a lot of clients because I know a lot of migraine sufferers, not really. And it just break my heart that they're not living their life to the fullest because they're afraid this is going to trigger a migraine or this is going to trigger a migraine. And, and you know, you tell them, correct your postures, but like, no, no they can't be bothered. And, you know, they're stuck in the cycle of, of suffering from migraine and it just oh, gets to me. <laughs> Actually, one of my clients who had a concussion, and after that, he suffered severe headaches. And he went to the test. He had 17 different kinds of headaches that they found after the concussion. Wow. He had eight sessions and he was more than 80% better. Fantastic. Did he continue? Uh, he didn't have to because, you know, he, he thought, you know, I'm, I'm able to manage. So it is actually better when people don't continue. That means they know that they can handle them themselves and they can build up their their muscles so to speak to heal exactly what about food how i mean of course food is important but if you have sort of a generic advice that we can give the viewers where can we start from to kind of begin to correct our diet because it is linked to you know all these diseases and it's linked to wellness before i talk about diseases one of the researchers he found that uh, vitamin B12, folic acid. For the nerves, yeah, folic acid it rebuilds the body. Uh, choline, and I forgot the fourth one. Uh, these are very good for conditions like obesity, diabetes, and cancer. Choline, is that C H O L I N? N E. N E. And what was the fourth one? Uh, fourth one, I forgot. Like an omega or a magnesium? It is, it is the precursor, precursor of choline. I forgot actually what it is. Chromium? Mm -hmm. Let me see if I know. Like a lot of people say now, if you have arthritis, avoid, avoid tomatoes. I mean, do you agree with that? Yeah. You know what? You can actually uh, get these online, you know, the foods that are rich in these. And have only natural foods. I don't, you know, like the supplements that then it is processed. Yeah. And another thing is like sometimes people they, they drink a lot of water, but they, they still are very thirsty. They get dryness of the skin, dryness of the mouth, and all that. And that means it's not drinking is not the problem. Assimilation of water okay. into the body gets affected. I worked on a on a young girl uh, with similar condition and she said she couldn't believe she was drinking seven liters of water because she was continuously thirsty and and after first session she went back to her two two liters you know three liters of water per, per day when one and a half liters and she was not thirsty as before was that based on her belief uh, I'm not very really sure what came up I can't I can't remember use, maybe yeah. touch with the balance uh, I was going to ask if you use the epigenetic healing or like. I do that also. But the thing is, because I, I use a lot of modalities. In, in Canada, I use uh, touch for health, osteopathy, um, energy psychology, epigenetic healing, uh, chronic healing, and the birthing and post birth and post birth reflex, reflex integration. Um, so there are so many you know modalities I use. So I don't know which one is suitable for that person for that day. So there is with manual muscle testing, I identify which one I need to use that day and then I use it. I understand. Fantastic. Wonderful. Yeah. What do you think the future holds for you? What will you be curious about next? What do you or how do you see yourself living? What will you do in five or ten years? Do you have a vision for yourself? 
Okay, uh, I'm 60. I, I just turned 61. Till age 85, <laughs> till age 85, I plan to teach, practice, seeing clients. And you know what I'm going to do in future, I have no clue what I'm going to learn more for sure. Um, anything, as I said, anything weird attracts my eye. So <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. And, so, and I hope I'll have the chance to learn from you as well. I don't know whether we can do it on this trip because you're leaving soon, but um, I would love to know more about the epigenetic healing. Um, Rashida, for our viewers, can we tell them what your website is? It's uh, com. Rashida N.com. Yeah. I'm Rashida Narahara City, so N. Okay, so we'll we'll post that as well. I'll post that, um, you know, with the with the video, so that they can have access to it. Um, and they can email me, okay. um, Rashida23 at gmail.com. Rashida23 at gmail.com. Yeah. 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 Thank you. That's very kind. And thank you for being my guest today. I wish you all the best on your tour in India. Thank please, you so much. Please stay in touch so that we can work on my trigger fingers. <laughs> when, when you're here, we can do it. I can work online for you. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. Okay, fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. If possible, I'll be there on uh, online tomorrow. Okay. You know, when once I finish with my, my workshop, yeah, you'll be I'd online. Like to... Okay, great. And so will I. And if there are any questions, then we'll answer it from the viewers. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Rashida. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you all. Thank you for viewing and let us know where you're watching from. Leave a comment. Let me know what you'd like to um, talk about next. I really appreciate hearing from you because that's the reason why we do it for you. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.